So I thought we would break away from gardening topics just for a little bit to dig into some cool kind of off-grid connectivity issues that we've really been struggling with here on our new homestead. So we've been tucked into our little tiny cabin and the way we get internet out here is Starlink. But now that we're starting to build our off-grid forever homestead further back on our property, we've really been coming into some big issues. We're only gonna have one internet source on the property, but we are always gonna to wanna to connect our cabin here with the homestead in the back, whether we're living in the cabin or we have it set up for friends and family to visit. We want the connection between the two. This is a problem we've been thinking about since we moved in and we've been trying to solve. First effort was, well, like always, you start with your least cost options. So started with a long range wireless bridge and that looked like a couple of satellite dishes he pointed at each other and they were supposed to have a 14 mile range like yay this yeah, should work it should solve it half and a mile 14 miles it should be able to do half a mile with some trees in the way and it only made it about 100 yards and then it lost signal <laughs> <laughs> it not meant couple, for the woods a <laughs> couple days of fooling around and gave up on that guy yeah. uh, so then started looking at other options you can't run an ethernet cable that far it has too many losses but you can do fiber optics so start digging into what fiber optics were how they work i had no clue mm -mm. but they do have you know, 30, 40, 50 mile range. So that's where we ended up. And we tracked down a, a direct berry fiber optic cable that we could run, put in the ground and terminate the ends ourselves and should be able to connect the two areas of the property together and then build our overall wireless mesh from there. So what we have here is 3000 feet of fiber optic cable just <laughs> delivered. <laughs> I know. Fresh off the truck. Fresh off the truck. Turns out shipping was almost as much as the cable. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna try and run that. We got a 3,000 foot run of cable. We have about 2,600 feet back to where my office is gonna be in the shop we're building right now. And then from there, we'll connect the shop to the house once the house is in place. Primarily right now, there's zero cell phone reception back there. Mm -hmm. I can't work on the place at all and lose reception during the business day, which I'm not supposed to be working on things during the business day, but I do. <laughs> So we're going to attempt that tonight. We're going to run the cable uh, and then try and make some terminations on on uh, fiber optics, which I've never done. I've watched the YouTube videos on it, and it doesn't look impossible. We'll figure it out together. So let's start running cable. Let's do it. We got ideas. We got plans. Let's see if they work. <laughs> Fancy, Ryan. Yeah. What this is is a 12-core direct berry cable with armoring. And we don't need 12 core, we only need two, but it's really tough to find armored direct berry two core wire. So this is what we ended up with. And this is a different product. This is not the typical Owens Corning with the really heavy steel cord in it. And this is more of a steel tape. I don't think it's quite as heavy duty, but we're also not gonna be running over it with a truck. We're gonna bury it and it's gonna be in the woods. So we'll see how it goes. This is working pretty good. I'm just kind of holding some tension on the cable so it will unwrap and Ryan's mostly directing the thing and then I'm just kind of shoving it off to the side so that we don't mow over it. Eventually we'll trench it. We're still looking for a trencher. We don't have one yet. We're definitely not going to trench all of that by hand. We've been trenching a lot of things by hand up until now but it is time. We definitely need a trencher. So all right let's do the next section. I 
definitely should have worn better shoes than flip-flops and brought gloves. <laughs> Ryan just grabbed me out of the garden and here we go. We got that strung just in time before it got super dark. It's too dark to wire it all in back at the shop, but we can do the end at the cabin. So I'm gonna go inside and show you what Ryan's starting on. Yeah, so this is where all of our network stuff is. It just sits behind our hull tree here, <laughs> hidden. So our Starlink is here. So the um, this cable runs up to the satellite dish, and then it comes down to here. And then we have an ethernet adapter that brings the internet into this box, and basically we are running a Wi-Fi mesh in here. So this is a, an Amata mesh. We have an Amata controller. We have a switch. This is a PoE switch, so it's powering all like these Wi-Fi hotspots that we have all over the place around here. We have outdoor ones, we have indoor ones. This is how we get by without cell service because we basically create Wi-Fi over large acreage. So you have one out by my garden, right? There's one out by the garden, there's one outside the cabin here, there's one inside the shop here, and then this switch has SPF output on it, which will hook up to the fiber optics. So fiber optics will run in, run into the switch. It'll shoot the internet back to another one of these switches back at uh, the office of my new shop. And then from there, we'll add in more of these Wi-Fi hotspots and it'll basically extend our Wi-Fi network out to there. So we're gonna pop a hole through here because this uh, cat, this uh, the fiber optic cable is huge. Not gonna fit. Nothing like putting holes in the cabin. I know. Make sure it's the right place. Yeah, somewhere around here. So I always I buy these long aircraft bits, and they're super convenient because now I can pilot a hole all the way through a wall, locate where the hole is on either side, and then just use a different cheap drill bit to uh, drill it out. So that's my little trick for going through a wall. All right, so this should now, if I get lucky, line it up. Pop right through. You made it look so easy. Let's go figure out how to put an end on one of these things. All right, so this is called a fan out kit. So there should be 12 cores in here but they're all bundled into individual bundles. They are right there. I think it's a couple bundles. So anyway, you can't just leave them exposed. So you install what's called a fan out kit because this protects the wires. So I should basically cut it the length of the fan out kit, plus an additional like six inches or so. And they probably make handy dandy tools for doing this. And I'm probably gonna screw myself here. Try. Probably is a better tool for that. Oh, guaranteed. There's supposed to be some armoring in here, which is probably what I'm having trouble with. I'm just gonna be very careful. Try and get through it. There it goes. I think we're free. That's gonna be a challenge. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, it's uh, actually comforting that that outside was as tough as it was, because I honestly thought it wasn't gonna be that tough. Oh no, Ryan. Hey, this is all part of it, right? Yep. So, here we are a couple days later. Turns out you do need a special tool to do armored cable. So here it is. This is an armored cable stripper. It's got a little knife in it. It's got a little wheel. It goes up and down. And it can strip both around the outside of the cable like this and then down the length of the cable.
this is our main core of 12 fiber optic strands. You can see them sticking out the end there. It's just very fine fiber in there. This is the actual glass tubes and then there's a small coating on it, a really thin coating. And that's what the purpose of this fan out kit is. Once we take this blue thing off, we're going to just have loose glass tubes and that's not workable. So this is individual little protective cases for it. So we're going to go ahead and put this kit on and then once this is on, we can go ahead and terminate. I'm going to start by slipping the collar for this kit on. These are special fiber optic uh, strippers. Get you with all the special tools today. It turns out you can't do it without special tools. There goes. These are all of our strands. I'm going to clean this fiber real quick and then we'll start pushing them into the holes. These are called LC connectors. So you have different types of connectors. This is an LC. And then we have our tool for cleaving. This is called cleaving. So what we do is we put the fiber optic in here, close it in, shut this, and then when we push this little wheel across, it cuts the end of the glass perfectly straight so that it gets a, a good cut so there's no jagged edges that distort the light. So let's pick two colors. I like red and blue. Patriotic? Yeah, red and blue. Again, we only need two, but we have 12 here, so if one happens to break, we have options. We are on day three of our quick one day project. I got the ends terminated last night and the next step is to test them. So I tested them and some of the ends failed so I reworked them. I'll go into more detail on that but let me show you how you test these guys. So here's our terminated end here. This is a light source. It basically produces a little laser light. You have different adapters to hook onto it. So this is an LC adapter. So you turn it on and then you can see it's like a really strong laser here. You plug this in and you can see that it's lit up. And if you look close, you can actually see a little bit of light coming up the fiber optic there. And we go to the other end, and I have a meter on the other end that reads the intensity. And based on that reading, you determine if your connections are good or not. So let's go check out the other end. So this is our meter. I don't have it on yet, but if you look here, the light is coming out. So the fiber optics are working. That's pretty bright. So this is a way you could test, but the meter's much better. So we turn this on and this is the signal strength, negative 70 or 77, negative 70 is the lowest. And we're at negative 2.2. I think ideally you're targeting zero. And this is where I talk about what happened at first. So when I first hooked this up, the red line was reading negative 46 and the blue line was reading negative 15. I didn't really know what the readings were supposed to be, but I knew they were supposed to be closer than that. So I reworked the red line and what I found is with these fan out kits, I actually need to trim the uh, fiber optic a little longer than the paperwork said. So instead of doing 10 and a half millimeters, I did 11, which doesn't sound like much, 
but the red one went from negative 46 all the way down to negative 0.5. So made a huge difference. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and hook them up. This is all temporary, but I've brought out another switch and then it's hooked to another access point that's just sitting out here. Fiber optic runs in. These are SPF to LC adapters. So this will plug into the switch this way and then you plug in your fiber optic cables there. So we'll do one of those on each end and then hopefully it starts talking and my controller finds this access point, adopts it, and voila, we have internet back here. Good morning, it's day 512 of trying to get the fiber optics to work properly. Where we last left you, we had got it to work, and um, it was working, but it was being erratic, it was being inconsistent and cutting out. So I've put a lot of time into it trying to troubleshoot since then, and I kind of wanted to do a quick summary of uh, the lessons learned, I guess, to try and help you guys out if you're trying to do this yourself. You can see we're now running green and yellow fibers instead of the red and blue we started with. A big thing, it took a little bit to figure out, is one on the left is the send and the one on the right is the receive. So on the other end, you have to swap them. So if we're uh, receiving on the yellow, then on the other end, the yellow has to be on the send. That was uh, something I didn't know because I'm new to fiber optics. But the big one, this is the thing that really took us down for a while. In this fan out kit, you saw us run the fiber optics through this plastic tube. All right, so right here, this glass comes through it. It's gonna be really tough to make out on camera, but it slides in and out by quite a bit. And so when I was trimming this, what I was doing is I was scraping the wires or the, the tube, cleaning all the stuff off of it. I was putting the cleaver and cleaving it. And then when I put the end on, it was pushing it back in and I kept pulling the ends back off and the glass would be super short and we weren't getting good connections. So what I figured out I need to do with this fan out kit is clean the end off, clean it really good, and then push it back in as far as I can, put it in the cleaver and push it in before I cut it. That way it's at the right length when I put the end on. That's made all the difference in the world. That was the big aha moment where everything is working rock solid now. For now. Hey, now. <laughs> the other thing I wanna address is the flashlight looking thing here. This is a fault finder, so I did hook it up to the optical meter on the other end. It gave me some readings that let me know that we were getting decent connection, but the optical meter is actually designed to be worked with your correct light source, whatever it's coming from. So on this one here, the yellow is the receive. I would take it off and I'd put it in the meter. My wavelength is uh, 1310, so I'd set the meter to 1310 and I would take a reading. You have to calibrate it first, then you take your reading and you should be under two. The optical meter has to be used differently than I was using it. You calibrate it and then use it on your wires later to actually see what your losses are. In our case here, I trimmed it, like I mentioned, hooked it back up, everything started working. <clears throat> I'm happy with it. At some point in time, I'll probably go back and actually test to see where we're really at, but I've kind of decided I don't know what else I would do on these ends, so if they don't work, they don't work at this point. So that's, uh, that's it. So it is working now, the lights are on, we have internet back at the shop, back at the camper. Everything's good. Yay, it's so awesome to have internet back here now. Not only is it gonna make it easier for me to get content out to you guys, but just communicating back and forth. We've been using walkie talkies, so it'll be super slick to be able to use our cell phones now. I'm curious if you like this kind of content from me. Gardening season is pretty short around here, so all winter we're typically working on projects, and of course we have this big project going on. So. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more content like this or what you're looking for. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you on the next video.